Do you just remember where did we stop last? You remember? The poem Resolution and Independence by William Wordsworth. We studied the first eight stanzas wherein the background was discussed, wherein the poet's uh, mind is discussed, the author's and narrator's tones are discussed, and we concluded where the leech gatherer was introduced. I saw a man before me unawares. The oldest man he seen that ever wore grey hairs. So, as an introduction, these words to you. Shall we proceed? The ninth stanza begins with introduction to the leech gatherer. So, there are lots of visual images here. Let us proceed with them one by one. First one as a huge stone is sometimes seen to lie couched on the bald top of an eminence. Hmm? A huge stone is sometimes, look at this, I mean the word sometimes is very tricky here because sometimes it is seen and sometimes it is not seen. Isn't it mysterious? Seen to lie cows on the bald top of an eminence. How strange it is, right? Who has kept it on the top of it? Is it a, is it a work of a human? Or is it something, something mysterious? Ah, let's see. So a huge stone is sometimes seen to lie cows on the bald top of an eminence, the first image. Wanderer to all who do the same spy, by what means it couldn't did it come? How could it come here? Isn't it a surprise? And whence? When did it come here? See, by the time uh, the pronouns are used here, there is a parallel structure of the stone, which is visual and metaphorically referring to the leech gatherer. So, how did this oldest man come here that too after the previous night which was hostile and the environment was very horrible and early in the mornings he is there. So, that it seems a thing endued with a sense like a sea beast. Look at the second image here. The sea beast crowled forth, sea beast is expected to be in the seal, but it has crowled forth that on a shelf of rock, maybe by the side of the beach, but still it is there on the shelf of rock or sand repost there to sun itself. So how did the sea beast come and reach there? Or how did a big huge stone uh, seen sometimes lie couched on the ball top of an eminence. How is this possible? So these kind of uh, surprises are uh, demonstrated, presented to the readers with shocks. And the presence of the leech gatherer also shocks the narrator. Such a seem this man. This man seemed like this. So the tenth stans stanza introduces you to that particular person. Not all alive or dead. See, there is a kind of a confusion. I mean, not clarity. There is no clarity here. Is, it, is he alive or is he dead? Not all asleep. And there are three aspects. Alive, dead, asleep. All these three statements are talking about the condition of the leech gatherer. In his extreme old age, now look at the uh, imagery here. His body was bent double. How did his body bent? What is the kind of a uh, comparison that he gives here is the feet and head coming together in life's pilgrimage. A pilgrimage is a word used for representing a journey uh, of meeting the salvation or reaching uh, the God, divinity. 
and uh, here it is presented for the feet and head coming together in the life's pilgrimage. So the bent uh, condition of the old man is narrated here. Now, how is it? As if some dire constraint of pain or rage of sickness felt by him in times long past, a more than human weight upon his frame had cast. Now, if you look at his cast, the appearance, the weight you know, which, which leads to his bending, the human weight, it could be physical or the emotional, uh, it could be sickness, it could be pain, whatever it is, that it has in the consequences, it has led to the kind of bending, so much of the bending that it has come to a pilgrimage of the head and the foot. So he was totally bent. Himself he propped limbs, body and a pale face upon a long grey staff of shaven wood. Now look at the details very carefully. What is he doing? This oldest man is holding a grey staff and that too is not a, a you know rough one just he picked it up. He said shaven wood and Still, as I drew near, see, it, all these things are seen from a distance. You can't see the top of the eminence. You can't see, uh, uh, you know, the sea beast uh, very close. You have to see it from a distance to identify. Similarly, the oldest man, the leech gatherer, was seen from a distance for a while. Now he goes near him. I drew near with a gentle pace, not a very hurried one gentle pace upon the margin of that Moorish uh, flood. So because there is a Moorish flood, it is not easy to walk either. Motionless as a cloud, the old man stood. How, did, how was he standing? If you just gaze the skies, you can see sometimes the blue sky with some single cloud, just motionless. And this motionless also represents some emotional elements that hears not the loud winds when they call. See, uh, we are introduced previously that there is a heavy wind and then it is the sun that is out. Everyone who is happy is out there and there is a loud noise and moved altogether if it moves at all. So uh, there is at this point of the time no difference between he as a part or he as a part uh, in totality of the nature. The twelfth stanza where we will conclude for, uh, for the time and then we will move on to what is the interaction between uh, the speaker and the leech gatherer later on. Of course this stanza concludes with a kind of a uh, dialogical beginning but it doesn't go dialogical later on. I'll explain it to you in the next uh, part. However, at length himself unsettling he the pond stirred with his staff and fixedly did look upon the muddy water. Now this is important. How did he look into the water which he combed as if he had been reading a book? Now how is he watching for something in the water? As if somebody holds a book and reads. How steadily you'd, you wouldn't be, un, I mean you'd be unaware of things uh, around you when you read a book, won't you? So such uh, intensity is, is, is observed. And now a stranger's privilege I took. I took the privilege of a stranger. So you uh, please note the poetic inversions here. What did he say? And drawing to his side, you know, going by the side of him. I did say, what did I say? This morning gives us promise of glorious day. Uh, see, when there is nothing to talk, what we talk is, we talk about weather, don't we? And this talking about weather is a sort of a beginning of the conversation. <sighs> there should be some topic to begin with, right? So, he says, the, there is a promise of a glorious day. Critically, you can talk about glorious day from the background of the, you know, industrial England or French Revolution, turbulences in England and so on and so forth. And then 
uh, if this be winter can spring be far behind like if uh, the the brightest day is after the darkest night you can give any metaphors but at this point of the time it serves two purposes one it be, it, it it introduces uh, this narrator to the leech gatherer with a uh, conversation opening second it hints us the background to the poem from what point of view do you think this poem was written so shall we meet in the next part where we discuss about the next four stanzas of the poem thank you